it's August 1st, 2023, and I just spent the day learning about Diogenes the Cynic. What an extraordinary character. I can't believe I didn't know about him. He was a contemporary of Plato's. He was born in Sinope, which is in modern day Turkey. And he first came into prominence because he was got exiled for debasing the currency. Uh, he like, there's, and the, the, the archeological record supposedly upholds this story because there's a bunch of coins from that time that were stamped and ruined. But it's actually, uh, so a lot of these stories, we don't know if they're apocryphal because they also have great uh, symbolic significance as well. So his whole life mission was debasing the currency of, of civilized behavior insofar as we have a social currency and an expectation of how we're to behave. So he was called a cynic because uh, kinikos means dog-like. And he thought human beings should behave more like dogs. Dogs live in the present, they are honest, and they, uh, you know, are not ashamed. There's a shamelessness. They don't, uh, they, they, they urinate and defecate in public. Diogenes did that, and he also even masturbated in public. And when confronted about it, he said, if only I could, if only I could satiate my belly when I was hungry by just rubbing it just as easily. And... There's just a million amazing stories about him. He hated Plato and hated the um, the pretenses of abstract philosophy. And uh, Plato taught was teaching his students about how man is a featherless biped. And he took a chicken and plucked its feathers and threw it into the classroom and said, behold, Plato's man, uh, to which Plato supposedly had to alter his definition of of what a man is to say he's a featherless biped who has broad and flat fingernails to distinguish him from the chicken and and when one of Diogenes's students decided that he was being a cynic and living without any possessions was too much for him. He, he decided to stop studying with Diogenes, but he said, can I have one of your books, please? And he said, would you, why would you rather have painted figs than the real thing? Why would you rather have written philosophy than a lived philosophy? Um, and then, so Diogenes lived in Athens in a big clay pot and he only had a cup and a spoon or something. And then eventually he saw a child like drinking from the river with his hand. And he said, I've been outdone in simplicity by the child who realizes that the cup isn't even necessary. And he threw out his cup. And then there's a, there are so many other amusing stories about him that I want to see if I can remember just a few of them. He, um, there was, a. They they, uh, they asked, a young man asked him, should I get married? And he said, no, it's too soon to get married. And he said, should I get married when I get older? And he said, no, and then it'll be too late. Uh, he thought one should never get married. And he didn't understand why people made all this effort to, you know, find love and com companionship. He thought these were all weaknesses that stopped people from being free. And hold on, it was another great, great story I gotta remember. Let's see. When when he was dying, he was uh, he was uh, asked what what they should do with his body, and he said, "Throw it outside the city walls, so that people, so that the animals can eat it." And everyone was shocked. And he said, well, give me a stick then so I can beat the animals away. And they said, well, you won't be able to beat the animals away because you'll be dead and you won't have any awareness or ability to move. And he said, well, if I won't have any awareness or ability to move, why do I care what happens to my body? Um, and then, oh, one of the most important stories was Alexander the Great came to meet him. And he said... He came to up to him to his big clay pot and he said, well, um, what can I do for you? I'm Alexander the Great. I can do anything for you. And he said, step aside. You're in my sunlight. Another great 
story because it it also points to the idea that that I mean, I I'm I'm thinking about this on the spot, but it seems like Alexander the Great he was probably thought he was the most powerful thing in the world and Diogenes was there to remind him that the sun is more powerful that's behind him and Alexander was respected Diogenes so rather than punish him for this he said if I were not Alexander I would be Diogenes which pointed to the great power that Diogenes had over his own existence it was a power that no one could take away from him he used to like walk around barefoot in the snow and hug uh, frozen statues and beg them for for money. He said that would get him used to uh, uh, being rejected, and then he would get used to the being cold, and he would get um, uh, he would like roll around in the heat uh, in the hot sand again to try and free himself from being. Uh, afraid of the of the elements or of anything that can't be taken away from him and Alexander as he was leaving said uh, uh, again he said if I were not Alexander I would be Diogenes and Diogenes supposedly looked up and said if I were not Diogenes I would still want to be Diogenes so he would choose his own position over that of even Alexander the Great and there are myriad other very funny stories that pointed to his wit, his irreverence. He would, uh, supposedly, there was a big banquet, and since he acted like a dog, they threw him scraps, and he responded by peeing on everybody. And again, this was all, uh, oh, and then he was being sold into slavery, and he said, sell me to someone who, who needs me, and, and sure enough, he was brought into a family and he became a teacher for these children. And there's a million other great stories about Diogenes, the cynic, the dog, that I would highly recommend people look up because they're very entertaining, funny, and enlightening. Over and out.